Hey guys, so sorry I can't be there to see your beautiful faces smiling up at me. But um, after a crazy day yesterday, uh, it's still very important that we go ahead and we, we keep up fill in the notes for the day and uh, make sure we're not falling too far behind. So what I've done is I've recorded, or I am recording, the entire notes uh, for the class period. You can just fill them out as you go. If you're getting your notebooks out, we're on page 55. Uh, I will walk you through this. Uh, we will uh, go through it. I'll give you enough time to write down the information, and we should be good. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started with this uh, first problem. We so, say that suppose Corey and his friend Walter go to a movie. Each of their tickets costs the same amounts, and they share a frozen yogurt that costs $5.50. The total amount they spend is $19.90. How can you write that equation that describes, how can you write an equation that describes this situation? Now, there's one very important word to keep in mind, and that's the word is. The word is, and I'm going to circle it here, is uh, important because it usually means equals. Uh, it's kind of the, the, the centerpiece of this sentence that describes we have an equation. Every, anytime you see the word is, think equals. So the total amount they spend is equal to 1990, for example, here. Okay, so that's important because we're going to need that later on. The word total tells us that the operation involved um, in the relationship is addition. The fact that we're adding up a couple different things um, together. For example, we'll be adding um, the cost of our yogurt. We'll also be adding up the ticket prices. Uh, and all that together should be 1990. Now, what numerical information do we have? Well, there's a couple things. We know that the frozen yogurt costs 550. So, we know that frozen yogurt is 550. Oops, messed that up. 550. We also know our total amount is 1990. We also know the total amount. Is 1990. Now, what do we not know? What is the unknown quantity here? Well, what we're trying to figure out is, is how much their tickets cost. We know that their tickets cost the same amount, but we don't know what that price is. So that's our goal. What's the unknown quantity? Well, the cost of a ticket. That is what we are looking at finding out. Now, when we make an equation, we'll have to reference, you know, what will our variable be? Now, we're going to use C. We're going to use C to represent the cost of our ticket, of a ticket. Okay, the screen's a little bit funny today, so I apologize for the, the real big, real bad scribbles, but um, I think it's still somewhat readable. Now, the verbal description of what's going on is that twice the cost of tickets or a ticket, we'll say, you can say a ticket or tickets, twice the cost of a ticket, because we're buying two tickets, the reason why it's twice, double the amount of the price because we're buying two of those tickets, plus the cost of our frozen yogurt equals our total, equals the total of 19 90. That is our equation right there, essentially, but it's uh, written in words instead of in, an equation. But we'll go ahead and we'll work our way to, towards writing an equation. Now, to write an equation, we need a numerical or algebraic expression for each quantity. So, for example, we'll need an expression for twice the cost of a ticket. Twice the cost of a ticket. Well, remember, we know we don't know the price of the ticket. We called that C earlier. But we know that we're buying two of them. So 2C to represent the fact that you're buying two tickets. 2C will represent the, the twice the cost right there. The price of the frozen yogurt, we already know. Uh, we know it was $5.50. And we also know that our total is $19.90. So our equation essentially is 2C, double the cost of the ticket for two tickets, plus the 550 for the yogurt ends up being the total of 1990. So there is our equation. 
we're not actually solving the equation here. We're just sort of writing it down. I know we can solve the equation. We've practiced that plenty of times. But I think writing the equation from the word problem tends to be what we struggle the most with. So how can you use a verbal model to write the equation? Well, it's kind of what we've already done. Just to fill this in, you're uh, doing uh, pr uh, twice the cost of a ticket. Okay, so that's the fact that we have a uh, 2C for our two tickets plus the cost of our yogurt. Right, that's uh, we already know that that's the 550, and then ends up being our total cost combined, ends up being our total cost, which we know is 1990. So, there you can see kind of the wording of it and also the expression and the actual equation itself all put together. All right, we are going to just go ahead and for the sake of time, skip number two here. Um, and work our way towards this next example one. All right. So Aaron and Alice are bowling. Alice's score is twice the difference of Aaron's score in five. The sum of their scores is 320. So basically, um, I know this is sort of already worked out, but let me explain it the way uh, I would just fresh, and you can kind of see how it's all worked out on your page. But I'm looking at Aaron's score. Aaron's, and then I'm looking at Alice's score. And when I add them together, I know I get a total of 320 points. But the question is, what is Aaron's score, or what's an expression to represent Aaron's score, and then what's an expression to represent Alice's score that ultimately ends up being 320? Now, up here, it, it says, you know, we don't know what Aaron's score is, right? Let A represent Aaron's score. So we're going to just let A, oops. We're going to let A just be there to represent Aaron's score. Now, it says that 2 times A minus 5 represent Alice's score. And where they're getting that from is from this statement here. Alice's score is twice, so double, the difference, difference means subtraction, of Aaron's score in 5. So basically it's saying you need to subtract Aaron's score in 5, which is what they're doing. They're taking Aaron's score, which is the A, they're subtracting five from it. That right there is the difference between Aaron's score and five or of Aaron's score and five. But of course, the two is in front because we are doubling it. It says Alice scores twice that difference. So that's why they've written it as two A minus five. A minus five, that's Aaron's score minus five because again, like I said, it's a difference of Aaron's score minus five. And then the two is doubling it. So that's our equation, and you would go around and, you know, and solve that. And you can already see how they've solved the problem and what answer they get. So we'll just skip past that. Let's go ahead and try and do our own problem. So Mary, Carlos, and Amanda collect stamps. Carlos has five more stamps than Mary, and Amanda has three times as many stamps as Carlos. Altogether, they have 100 stamps. Find the number of stamps, stamps each person has. Write a verbal description of the basic situation. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put this here, and then we'll fill in the dots here. But uh, basically filling in those, those squares, but not quite yet. So basically, how I like to break this up is I'm looking at Mary, I'm looking at Carlos, and I'm looking at Amanda. And I know that all together, if I add up all their totals, they have 100 stamps all together. But what's an expression I can use for Mary? What's an expression I can use for Carlos? What's an expression I can use for Amanda? So when we read this, it says Carlos has five more stamps than Mary. So whatever Mary has, which I like to call M, but I, I'm going to go ahead and call it S. I don't know why they called it S. I guess for stamps. Um, they use S in the steps down below here. So I'll just call it S. I don't know how many stamps Mary has, so I'm just going to call Mary's stamps S. But I do know that Carlos has five more than Mary. So if I take Mary's amount, which is S, and I add five to it, then that will be for Carlos. Carlos is uh, the same amount of, that Mary has, but plus five. So S, because that's how many stamps Mary has, plus five, because that would be five more than Mary's. Amanda has 
three times as many stamps as Carlos. So Amanda is going to, we're going to take Carlos's amount. Carlos has S plus five stamps, but Amanda has three times as many as that. So we're going to triple that. We're going to multiply that by three and that will be Amanda's stamp total. So now we have an expression. We have S for Mary, S plus five for Carlos, and then three times S plus five for Amanda. And that's what we're going to go ahead and fill in. So let S represent the number of stamps Mary has. We know that Carlos has five more stamps. And Amanda has, um, how do they say this? Uh, three times. I guess they're going to fill it in. Carlos has S plus five because it's five more. And Mary has three times S plus five because it's three times as many as Carlos. So we're just going to fill this in. We have S. We'll have S plus five five for Carlos, and then we'll have three times S plus five for Mary for a total of 100. Now let's go ahead and bring this equation down so we can solve it. So I apologize in advance for my S is looking like the same thing as fives, but I'll try to make them a little obvious. Try to make sure it's, it's clear the difference. Okay, so when we do this, the first thing that we're going to want to do is go ahead and distribute this three into that S plus five. So three times S is where they get the three S from. But 3 times 5 makes 15. So 15 is going to belong in that box there. We're going to bring down our 100. Everything else they brought down. The S they brought down. That S they brought down. That 5 they brought down. Just distributing gave us 3S and 15. So now we need to combine like terms. So we have several terms we can combine. Let's change the color here. I'll use, let's use this galaxy color. That's pretty cool. So we can combine all these S's together. We have 1S, 1S, and 3S. If you bring all those together, that makes a total of five S's. And then we also have some constants we can bring together. Let's try this red thing. What does that do? Five and 15 are constants. We can bring both of those together. Five plus 15 makes 20. So now we have the equation 5S equals, or 5S plus 20 equals 100. So now when we solve it, the first thing we would do is subtract 20 on both sides, and we would bring down our 5s, and 100 minus 20 is 80. Then we would divide by 5 on both sides, and 80 divided by 5, we end up s equaling 80 divided by 5 is 16. All right, I'm going to give you just a second, because I wrote down that pretty quickly, so take a second to try and catch that up, because we're not quite done with the problem yet. So remember, Mary had S number of tickets. Carlos has S plus five. And then uh, Amanda has three times S plus five. So now that we know S, we know that Mary has 16 tickets. Because S is 16, S is how many tickets Mary had. Carlos has 16 plus 5, 5 more than 16. So Carlos has 21 tickets. And then Amanda has 3 times the number that Carlos has. So we have to do 3 times 21, and that'll be Amanda's total. So that should be 3 times 21 is 63. Now, to check that our answer makes sense, remember, it should be that all three of these tickets add up to 100. So Mary's tickets plus Carlos, uh, Carlos's tickets, and Amanda's tickets. 16 plus 21 plus 60, 63 should equal 100. And in fact, it does. They do equal 100. You can use a calculator to verify it if you would like. Okay. So would a fractional answer make sense in this situation? I'll give you time to think real quick about it. But would a fractional answer make sense in this situation? Well, the short answer would be no. It doesn't make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Well, because we cannot have um, a fraction of a stamp. We're talking about whole stamps here. We can't have a fraction of a stamp. Now, if you are saying it, you know, we're not talking about ripping the stamps up, okay, folks? 
No, we're not ripping the stamps and then having half a stamp. Okay, no, it's just people have stamps. Don't be ridiculous. All right. So I, I could hear you saying it. Don't say it. All right. Fractional answer doesn't make sense uh, for the logic of this problem because we're not going to have fractions of stamps. We're not going to have people ripping up their stamps. Okay. Um. I'm trying to see this discussion question. What might it mean if a check revealed that the answer to a real world problem did not make sense? So let me tell you what they wrote in the book. The book says the equation may have been written incorrectly. The equation may have been written correct, but then solved incorrectly where there may not be any solution to the problem. So basically if we plug in our answer here and it didn't work, like it wasn't actually a hundred equals a hundred, then something went wrong on our part. We, either wrote down the equation wrong, or maybe we just solved the problem wrong. So if that's why checking is very important to make sure that our solutions work. Okay. So, um, if it didn't work, if checking didn't work, then, uh, maybe our, equation is wrong or our work was wrong. So we might have made a mistake somewhere in the math. Um, so that's why we always check our work because by plugging in and checking, we can verify that we are correct or we can find out that we did something wrong. All right, so now we are going to look at this. Now, you can already see this in the book, but I'm going to cover this up because this isn't always given to us. I know you can still see it, but I want to kind of approach this problem from scratch. A rectangular garden is fenced on all sides with 256 feet of fencing. The garden is eight feet longer than it is wide. Find the length and the width of the garden. So if we had this problem just from scratch, the first thing I would do is, of course, draw a rectangle. Okay. Now, labeling this rectangle is really what's important because I don't like the fact that they already gave us um, the sides here uh, because more often than not on a test, especially the EUC, uh, they're going to make you try to find that stuff yourself. You're going to have to label the sides yourself. So we don't know what any side length is. So they use W. I'm going to use W as well, but let's call one side W. I have no idea what that side is, is in length. But I do know that one side is eight feet longer than the other. So if I call this side W, then this side would have to be W plus eight because it would be the side that is eight longer than W. So one side I just call W. I don't know what it is. But the other side I call W plus eight because I know that it's got to be eight more than the other side, than the side I had just called plain old W. Just to fill this in, the other side would be W here, and the bottom side would be another W plus 8. Now, the question is, the fencing that goes around this yard totals up to 256 feet. But what's the word for what we're asked to find here, for what that 256 is? Um, the length around the sides. What do we call that? Hopefully, you're thinking it. It's called perimeter, right? And to find perimeter, uh, we have to add up all four sides, okay? So when we add up all four sides, that means we have a side W plus a side W plus 8 plus a side W plus another side W plus 8. And that ends up being a total of 256 feet. So that is our equation. Now we have to combine some like terms. Now I put the W plus eight in parentheses here and hopefully you did too, but it's actually not really necessary. There's not really a need for the parentheses uh, because they're, we're not multiplying anything to it. We're not distributing anything to it. It's just there to kind of contain, to state that that goes together. But ultimately in the mathematical equation we wrote, they're not necessary because we're not multiplying anything to it. It's just a regular W plus 8. So it's literally the same as if we had written W plus W plus 8 plus W plus W plus 8 equal to 256. But by doing that, you know, 
it's not as clear that, hey, this is, you know, those longer sides. Uh, I put them in parentheses just to distinguish the fact that it was all four separate sides. But anyway, we solve it the same way. We have to combine our like terms now. So let's notice we have a W, a W, a W, a W. We've got four of those Ws. So a W plus a W plus a W plus a W is four Ws. We also have some other like terms. I'm going to go ahead and pull up my purple here. We have eight and we have eight. So we can combine that to make 16. 4W plus 16 ultimately equals 256. So now you just got to solve it. So if you subtract 16 on both sides, we would end up with 4W equals 440. And then when you divide by 4 on both sides, you end up with uh, W equaling, um, is it 100? What is it? Uh, oh, no, wait. I'm sorry. Uh, ultimately, it ends up being... Um, why did I write 440? I'm sorry, 240. That's why I got confused for a second there. Maybe you guys saw it, maybe you didn't, I don't know. But 256 minus 16 is definitely 240. I got too many fours in there. All right, so if you divide that by four, then you end up with W equaling 60. But that's not done, we're not done. We know that one side is 60, that's true. But then we need to know what the other side is. The other side is eight more than 60. So the other side would be uh, 68. So those are the two answers. We would have 60 uh, and 68 as our answers. All right. So I'm going to scroll a little bit here. And we're going to knock out uh, one of these problems real quick. And that'll be it for this one. Okay. This needs to go away. Go away thing. Okay, cool. Um, anybody need any more time here? Yes, no? Raise your hand if you need more time. Haha, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't see you anyway. All right, example two. Write and solve an equation to solve each problem. So uh, Janine has job offers at two companies. One company offers a salary of 28000 with a raise of 3000 every year. So let's go ahead and look at the equation just to show you what that is. So that's this first job. Salary is 28,000 originally, starting off 28,000. But then you're adding 3,000 for every year. So N would represent the number of years that uh, Janine works at that job. So that is one job right here. The other job, the other company offers a starting salary of 36,000 with a raise of 2,000 each year. So that's why you can see on that side, they start at 36,000, but they're adding 2,000 for every year that they work there. And from that point on, you have an equation and you can go about solving that equation. They show the work there. I'll let you look at it. I just want to explain the equation because now we got to do that ourselves for this problem. One moving company charges $800 plus $16 per hour. And now the moving company charges $720 plus $21 per hour. At what number of hours will the charge of both companies be exactly the same? So we're looking at the two companies, one here on the left side of the equal sign, the other on the right side of the equal sign. The one on the left is the one that charges $800, but it's adding $16 per hour. So that's going to be plus 16 times T there. Plus 16 T, that's $800 plus the 16 per hour. On the right-hand side, we have the starting price of 720, but that one is adding $21 for every hour. So now, when we go ahead and start solving this, we're, what we would do to solve this is we would try to combine the uh, T's together. I'm going to bring down the 16 and the 21 into those boxes. So basically, let me show you what I would do kind of naturally. And I'll fill in the boxes as we go. We have 800 plus 16t equal to 720 plus 21t. So I would try to combine these two t terms. However, they're on opposite sides. So what I would do is I would take the 16t. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'm going to choose the 16 because it's smaller. And move it to the other side. So since it's a positive 16, I would subtract this side by 16t. And of course, this side by 16t, just so I can cancel that out, and then combine them over here. 
which when I do that leaves me with 800 equal to 720. And then we combine the T terms. 21 minus 16 is 5T. So that's kind of what's going on in that step here. Um, what they have here by minus, they're subtracting 16T here and they're going to subtract 16T here. That's what they're doing. I wrote it like this, but they wrote it out, you know, I guess the long way rather than below it, like I wrote it below it. But ultimately, we have that same thing. And we already talked about the fact that when I do that, you're going to cancel these T's out and just have the 800 on the left. And on the right, you're going to bring down the 720, but you're going to combine 21 minus 16. 21 minus 16 is 5T. So going from there, what I would do is I would try to... Uh, I'm going to bring that 5T down to fill in that box. But what I would try to do next is I would try to move that 720. I've got the 5T here. So I need to get rid of the 720 so that I can try and get T by itself or work my way down towards getting T by itself. So when I subtract 720, I won't have that there anymore. It'll just be 5T. But of course, don't forget to do that on both sides. So when I do it to the left, 800 minus 720 ends up being 80. So filling this in on our boxes, we would have 80 equal to 5T. And then of course, dividing by five, we can finally get the t by itself, um, but 80 divided by 5 ends up being 16. So this tells us that it'll be 16 hours when both companies charge the exact, exactly the same. So uh, one thing that you can do is you can plug in that value and see if it works. So if you plug in 16, that we got as our answer. Hopefully this should work. So 16 times 16. Ooh, I got to use my calculator. I, I just want to make this quick. 16 times 16 is 256. 720. 21 plus 16. 21, or I'm sorry, 21 times 16 is 336. So 800 plus 256 is 1056. And then 720 plus 336 is equal to the same exact thing. So it's helpful to plug that value in, to plug in our answer that we got back in for T and just see if we get a true statement because then we can confirm that we did it right. So basically, you don't have to ask me if you got the question right. You can plug your answer in, and if it works, then you know you got the question right. If it doesn't, then you should talk to me and try and figure out what you did wrong. Okay, so after 16 hours, uh, the both companies will be the same. All right, I'm going to end the video here, guys. I think that's going to be most of the period. So make sure you have all these filled in uh, because I will come by and check them next week. Otherwise, I hope you have a good rest of the day tomorrow, which should be Friday, because you should be watching this on Thursday. Tomorrow, you'll be doing a practice sheet over some of this type of stuff. So uh, good luck on that. Make sure you turn that in tomorrow at the end of class. Um, again, you'll get that tomorrow on Friday. So yeah, I'll see you guys uh, next week.